<laughs> the warlord's problem is a common critique of anarcho-capitalism. It goes something like this. If you dismantle the state, then nothing's going to stop warlords from coming out of nowhere and seizing regional power, creating a Mad Max-style thunderdome of warring marauders roaming across the country, people having to pledge allegiance to one warlord or another to avoid getting caught in the crossfire or be enslaved. There's several problems with this <laughs> hypothesis. Warlords. What is a warlord? A power with a legally recognized right to initiate force in a given geographical area. Say, where have I heard that definition before? Like, we need the state to stop states? Honestly, it's like protecting yourself from getting punched in the face by cutting off your own face. Although, to be fair, the criticism isn't completely without merit. You can't have anarcho-capitalism without a change in how society views the state. When we win the argument, and we will, that the state is an immoral and unethical institution, when everyone has the same visceral and emotional reaction to the state that they do about slavery, based in the non-aggression principle, then anarcho-capitalism becomes inevitable. If the federal, state, and local governments in the U.S. disappeared tomorrow, people will rebuild the state. The U.S. isn't full of villains from AMC dramas just waiting for the government monopoly on legalized force to break down. We have a civil society. The state will reform peacefully, though I'd rather it not have to reform in the first place. Now let's move on. If, for argument's sake, I have my way, then that just means we won the argument. The state is now well understood by everyone to be immoral and unethical. Now what's to stop some warlord coming out of nowhere from private business just to build an army and take over? First, cost. You wouldn't think this. Armies are expensive. Like, really expensive. They have to be recruited. Their salaries and benefits had to be paid. They need to be housed. They need to be trained. You need to pay for the land to build these housing and training facilities on. I'm talking food, water, electricity. All of this needs to be supplied. Full-time grounds crew and maintenance staff needs to keep everything working as well. Your troops need to be equipped. Weapons, armor, vehicles, maintenance for said equipment. You also need a proper command structure that will probably demand high salaries. I can't imagine a CEO will make a good general, so naturally he need to hire one. At this point, you, my prospective warlord, are already out a lot of money and you haven't even invaded anyone yet. But, let's move on. The private media is probably speculating about your intent, which will cause you to bleed customers and lose revenue. Meanwhile, your business partners and shareholders are beating down your door. Your army is costing the company majorly, and your stock prices are just plummeting. At this point, prospective warlord, your ambitions should have ended before they began. But let's just say that you manage to somehow keep your position as CEO, you convince your business partners, you convince your shareholders that this is the right decision, and they are stupid enough to go along with it. And you get to keep your army. So, with all these barriers out of the way, let's start conquering. The first thing that happens is, as you claim more territory, businesses will recognize your violation of the non-aggression principle and begin to sue your company through private arbitration. Since you, my aspiring tyrant, do not recognize courts other than your own, you ignore them. Given this obvious liability, companies that the arbitrators are networked with will begin to blacklist you as a means of enforcing their rule, refusing you and your companies and your employees access to their services. Your company will be without water. It will be without electricity. Nobody will sell you food. Your bank accounts will be frozen and fuel lines to your facilities will be shut down. Now, it's entirely possible that some company will go rogue or not honor the blacklist. However, you, my prospective warlord, are still at a great disadvantage because what services they will sell to you will be at a tremendous markup. You'll still be bleeding resources one way or another. Promises of alleviation will be made. 
if you give up. And this promise will be given not only to your company, but to individuals and employees in your company. It will convince your soldiers to defect, your employees to defect. Meanwhile, because of your hostility, the economic demand for defense agencies and militias will skyrocket. And these will be the bulk of the forces that will resist you. The cost for these defense agencies will be paid for by businesses in your path of destruction. Though I would imagine that many would do so for free, simply because either it's the right thing to do, or it's just good PR. Because firearms are available, well, I'm reminded of a quote attributed to the commander-in-chief of the Japanese Imperial Navy during World War II, Isoroku Yamamoto. You cannot invade the mainland United States. There will be a rifle behind every blade of grass. That's what an invasion of a voluntary anarcho-capitalist society would be like. And that's what your legions face, enterprising autocrat. So, here's your situation. What territory you did gain from the first few weeks of your advance is rapidly losing ground to constant guerrilla attacks from militias and stern resistance by defense agencies. You have no water, fuel, or electricity coming to you, but you anticipated this because you're a smart wannabe dictator and you stockpiled beforehand. However, your supplies aren't infinite and are being rapidly depleted faster than you could have ever anticipated because of battlefield maintenance and the medical needs of your troops coming back from the battlefield. Yeah, it's simple sabotage. I mean, just yesterday, you lost an entire 10,000 gallons of water after someone slipped bacteria into the supply. Furthermore, your soldiers and employees are defecting in droves. You lost an entire company of troops just an hour ago after they were paid off by the enemy and not only did you lose them, but they're now fighting against you. The media and the internet have made you a national laughing stock. And at this point, if you aren't reading the writing on the wall, well, what happens next, you kind of deserve. The free market has just too many safeguards from people like you. The facts are, if you don't want warlords, be an anarcho-capitalist.